Check, check, check. Welcome back to the Young OG Perspective, where we give you a new perspective. A fresh perspective. A Young OG Perspective, baby. Yo. You know what it is. It's the fresh kid with the beard and no fear. And today, we came to push positivity. Uh. Change the narrative. Facts. And most importantly, move the culture. Woo. My name is Alonzo. Alonzo Ashley Oliver. In case you're looking for me, but I promise you I'm the host with the most. Oh, talk to him. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about? Talk to him. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see me pimping last night, right? You see me pimping? <laughs> I did see you looking like pinky motherfucker. Somebody said I look like uh, Joker, but black. <laughs> the nigga version. That's what they say. <laughs> and like I said, <laughs> this gentleman across from me, if I'm the CEO, he is the CFO. Money bag. He goes by the name of Londo, a.k.a. So sick. AKA Londo Esco Bars, AKA Watch your back, cuz we ain't watching for you. We looking Train. to the left, to the Train. right, but never behind us because your ass was never in sight. Like you have really shitty vision. Mm, I thought you were saying shitty breath. That, 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 that too. That too. Yeah. yeah. Facts. Yeah. 2020 over here. You know what I'm saying? 2020 <laughs> up in here. You know what I'm saying? What's good, Londo? How you feeling, man? I'm feeling gravy, bro. I'm feeling gray V. Yeah, so we, we're we here. Um, we're waiting for our guests, um, but we're going to shoot the shit like we normally do. Uh, yeah, let's chop it up, we, bro. We, we are the best shit talkers. Yeah. We, we got the hardest intro. That's a fact. And we talk the best shit. That's also a fact. And we dress the best. You know what's it's crazy, bro? I don't know. And we many, look the youngest. How could you be young OGs and still look that young? And we're probably the fittest. That's true. Yeah. Damn, bro. That's See a- some of y'all podcasters walking around here with pot bellies, man. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, you see, I got the Petty Boy shirt. I got, I'm caping. I'm caping for myself. Like, oh, I'm out I'm out here. Oh, I did see Will say you ready to start pot beef. Will? Yeah. Will Wonder. Yeah. Let's, let's go. He said, he said it. He said let's he was go. ready for the pot beef. Hey, I got, I got a full clip for Will. Damn. Yeah. Damn, what do you say? I say, uh, I got all these. Oh, no, was it Jay? I got mm-hmm. all these banana clips for your monkey business. <laughs> You know what I mean? He, he also said, you're going to catch me in the lobby blunting and I don't even smoke. Damn. You know what I mean? Damn. Uh, so Those che- ready for all the so smoke. So check it out. We're here right at the shop. Yes, sir. Salt Lake City where we film. Yes, sir. We're influencers for this space. Yes, sir. Shout out to the Shout shop. Shout out to the shop. Um, good co-working space if you're ever interested in you know, bringing your business or if you work remote and you want to get out of the house, mm-hmm. this is a great place to network, to mingle. Event um, center. Events. Yeah, yeah there's they, a they nice- party going on Yeah, right there's now. a party happening right now. Um, our beloved Mike Styles um, works here. Yes, sir. That's how we got this 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 uh, space. Yes, um, hustle. But there's an event happening upstairs, right? Mm-hmm. People coming down, showing us love. Yes, I, I'm really energized by that. Yes, yes. Like I, just 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 the simple like shout out to DJ Tao. Yes, sir. That's shout out to say. MOFJ. That's what I was just gonna say. <clears throat> but go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I don't want to cut no, no. Was, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Shout out to the gentleman mm-hmm. came downstairs, set us up. They don't have to do that. Yeah. Took time out of their busy schedule to come say what's up. To yes, us. and they're in here working. Yeah, Respect. dope. I love that. Respect. And Paul mm-hmm. is the one who's throwing the party upstairs. Yep. Him and sipping. But shout out to sipping vibe. Yeah, to, to him and his one of his partners. And bro, it's, just, it's cool to see the community. Oh yeah, like we weren't expecting it, right? We were here no. just to do our business, and we run into people. Yeah, I love it. Exactly, I love it. But Paul, man, keep some Uncle Nearest on deck, bro. <laughs> and some <laughs> Hennessy. He said, "I got white claws. I got white claws." <laughs> I got vodka. <laughs> Based on those two drinks, you can probably deduce what the audience was mm-hmm. for this party. Yeah. It's okay. No disrespect. But they definitely didn't have Uncle yep. Nearest and they definitely didn't have They had nothing Hennessy. brown. Yeah. They had nothing brown. Yeah. I mean. What Meek Mill say? White girls <laughs> gone wild. But check it out. You know what's funny though? It's like people know we do a podcast. Yes, sir. So when you start talking to people and they know we do a podcast, they try to have a full-on podcast with you. It's like, bro, save it for the pod. It's like, yo, <laughs> chill. <laughs> like, <laughs> they are ready for a conversation. Do you think it's, it's they're like auditioning? They're like, l- let me show you what I got. If, if, if Paul was auditioning, I, I'm fucking here for it. Oh, facts. You know what I mean? Because he was talking that shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I would love to have that on that. But that always happens. Like, even like, Lately, I've been, I was at a couple of ne- different networking events. Yeah. When I get on the phone with them or whatever, it's like a podcast. And I'm like, yo, same thing. That's why I said, yo, save it for the pod. <laughs> we'll get you on. You know what I mean? We will get you on. You know what I mean? And with that being said, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we are back from our uh, commercial break here. No need for you to clap us in, Miguel. <laughs> we have our special guest, DJ Lover Lover. 
Hey. Is that is that what you're going by nowadays? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Because I always say Dan and people are like, who? And then I say Lover and they're like, oh, then they like, yeah. know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Everyone knows me by Lover. No, people rarely know me by Dan mm. on the scene. But it's all right. It's okay. all right. It's what's, only for the chosen few. Man, what's, what's been new with you, man? Oh, man. I've been just a lot of work. Uh, just a lot of, uh, kind of you see, like, you know, COVID hit the DJ industry real hard. Mm. You know, we were all slowing down. But it was a good slowdown. It was a, a talk kinda, about it. Talk about it. It was just a good reset, just to kind of just really get back into working on stuff, whether it's working on your marketing, yeah, working on your library, your computer, um, whether it's um, just trying to get refocused on like what do you want to tackle um, on there. So I just been really hitting. I, I kind of just reset and just kind of re kind of changed my mind and my focus i was like sit there in my room just like redoing libraries redoing getting songs that i thought i had and and re kind of getting those those just like uh, refocusing yeah you just re- gotta refocus and reframe work. and i feel and, like i feel like um you know because obviously that's when we i mean we we were going before covid mm. but then it was a good break it was a necessary break yeah to take i yeah. thought about that on my run today i think <clears throat> It it was a necessary break, but I think that break gave you a lot of time to put you into the position you are today with the way that you edit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. you got you you got your shit off, bro. I, I would be COVID. I would be up at night like fucking pissed. Like I'm following the tutorial. Why isn't my shit doing this? You know what I mean? Because like you know if you do a Adobe Premiere, it's like. You can't just fucking drag and drop like yeah. these fucking final cut motherfuckers out there. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's true though, homie girl. You drag anything in the final cut and it'll do it for you. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely a, a necessary pause. But on on top of that as well, um, you are the co-founder or owner of Lovers SLC. As yeah, well. co-founder of Lovers okay. with my boy Dijon. And you guys, you guys, you guys pretty much came up with that whole concept during COVID. During COVID, yeah. yeah. And it just uh, we launched that um, coming in because because we had you guys here, but it was like a really quick thing because yes. we were promoting other yeah. things. So like. Give, give us more details, like how, like what kind of conversations did it take to kind of curate Lovers SLC? Whoa, uh, man, it was just long, long conversations on like, you know, you know when you get your friends, you go down those rabbit holes and you just like, you <laughs> you you are just like battling, you're, you're, you're just talking about stuff, you're talking about design and you're talking about the process and what you want to kind of create. And so, I mean, with the launch of Lovers, I mean, people don't understand like all of our like, followers are all it's all from the ground like we really did so much groundwork through covid yeah uh, following people saying uh happy birthday saying thank you giving people their flowers and people didn't even know who we were mm-hmm. and um and it's just we really just i remember people time. hitting me like who who is this yeah <laughs> and i didn't know i was like i didn't know if they, y'all wanted to be secretive or what and i'm like oh you know what? it's a good cause just follow back mm-hmm. yes and then it just took and then me and Dijon just really sat through like sound design, who we, who we really wanted to market to, how can we market to the people? Um, and, and so it's just, we launched, um, I believe we launched in 21 and Mm -hmm. then, um, man, those parties were just that first year of our parties and events was just on point. Like probably one of the funnest times, uh, like nights of DJing. Um, I got to play the the sound and the music that I wanted to listen to. I didn't have any like you know, club owner telling me I got to play this. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember I told this girl, like, she wanted ABBA. I'm like, we're not playing it tonight. What? Like, <laughs> you know. Almost you like know. a almost like a house party. Feel. Yeah, it was just house party vibes and R&B vibes and soul vibes. and. But, you uh, know, you know, it's crazy. Sorry to cut your knowledge. What's crazy is when I see um, Good Grammar now. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to, I immediately give you guys the credit. Yes, because hey, because hey, talk, talk, no, talk. that's what we do. Talk that shit. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna talk that shit for y'all. People knew about good grammar, but it was a speakeasy. Yeah, right. Now it's a fucking frat party. You know what I'm saying? We got some special guests. Come on in. Come on in. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's up? Hey, we ladies. We were like, let's go scope out the podcast room. We're coming to film here tomorrow. Oh, you are? You guys? Yeah. And he was like, oh, she was like, oh, is this where they film? I was mm-hmm. like, no, not really. And here you are. Yeah, <laughs> we're here. But you guys are filming an episode. You're yeah. filming an episode tomorrow? Oh, we were upstairs oh, nice. too. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. We're going to try to snatch a few if we can, but the vibes are rare. We'll yeah. Let's try to knock out like four or five we're episodes or what? We're, we're, mm. so, it's our first go. Potentially. 
So we have high hopes. Mm -hmm. Is it all audio or are you guys doing video too? We're doing both. Okay. Oh, so you guys got multiple outfits yeah. and shit too coming through? We, we sh Who's we filming it for you? <laughs> Mike is participating with us. We have <laughs> she said participating. He'll be around. Like phones? To do this situation. Are you going to do your cell phone? Yeah, we'll just film off. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay. Is that why you're? Oh, that's yeah, why you're asking me who, what, if yeah. you do a yeah. premiere. Okay. We're not at this level yet. Okay. Well, you, you <laughs> we're know, just, we're, we're you can be. You know, if you join the network. Yeah. <laughs> the network. <laughs> we're, uh, we are, we are taking uh, applications, applications to be on the network. Yeah, especially if y'all dress like that, we can use, you know, <laughs> use that on the. On the <laughs> We, 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 we always could use yeah. fresh faces. Yeah, well, I mean, when we're, we have something to share, we will definitely okay. talk about our shit. Once okay. we have provided value. I love okay. it. Okay, I, I, lo I feel that. I, feel I love that. it. Yeah. There's been a lot of special guests dropping by. We had Tao in here, MOFJ. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. It's a vibe up there. Go check it, it out. There's yeah. no there's no yeah. brown liquor, Do though. You know the, <laughs> yeah. Do you know, like, what the event is? Mm -mm. So there's a girl that, I mean, her, like, Oh, yeah. They, they, they said it was an what, influencer. Yeah, that's what Paul yeah. was saying, right? But she's okay. super cool. She works um, for the University of Utah like, basketball athletics program. And oh, like, shit. Their, oh, dope. Their like, operations, but she just posts about okay. like, fun things to do. Like, she'll say, like, fun things to do in Salt Lake this weekend, like May 5th through 7th. And mm. then she'll like, list a bunch of things going on. Events. So if you throw throwing an event, lovers is throwing an event. Hey. So we met her. We met her. We were talking with her. We were like, and she was like, when you guys started, like, I'd be happy. What's your like, podcast like, called? It's called Always Release. Ooh, I okay. Love that. Okay. Okay. Ooh, I see the I see the merch. Already. Yeah, already. Hey. Yeah, already. Yeah. 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 You didn't even notice I cut my hair. I feel bad. I'm sorry. Alex, you see I cut my hair? Oh my God, you did. I'm saying I'm bad with my hair. Yeah. This will this will cut off like five inches. I cut off like two feet. Motherfuckers don't even know this. Wait, what happened? Is it summer, summertime? Summertime, man. Yeah, you know, I was doing yard summertime work today. The braids is not for the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. um, just it just felt oily and just really? nasty. You know what I'm saying? Get that good wash in. Yeah, you know, it's all good. I like the braid, um, Sophia. This is Sophia, right? Thank you. Yes. Have you, do you know? We also, we also got. A, like, do you know Dan? Little hair. See these little shiny You guys know Dan, right? Yes. No. Co-founder co of Lovers SOC. Put some respect on it. Ooh. Hey. Hey. I was just saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is our lovely suite for now. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like a just like in and out spot. Yes, it was the pre predestination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then college radio took it over. Yeah, so college radio came in just. Uh, wait, wait, what do you mean college radio? I'm just talking about the college crowd. Oh, okay. I okay, mean okay. that is like the college crowd. I mean, other than that and Twist, mm -hmm. I mean that is the college like. But you guys started that. I feel like <sighs> I. I would say we definitely had. Nope, uh, they've never had a line to the fucking State Street to go fact. in there. Facts, and we have the pictures to prove it. We yeah, have the pictures exactly. to prove it. Exactly, and and yeah, we did a lot of work. And uh, shout out to the whole staff over there. Good grammar. Shout out to the owner Fallon. Fallon, yep. She's 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 amazing. Um, and and always was like off the jump supporting us. And so and you don't get that with a lot of the bar managers. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so I I I definitely shout out to her. Um, just for always looking us out mm -hmm. and uh, definitely and we definitely helped we did revive it i know uh like COVID was tough on everybody, everybody. Yeah, and sure. like we we gave her like a jolt yeah. and um and, and so that's all you can do and then you know i just been djing you know i really took over my you know corporate stuff and my but that, wedding but, stuff. but that's what i was gonna say because before um lovers slc you had been out of Moose Lounge Club One, whatever you want to call it, for a yeah. while, yeah, <laughs> and just and just kind of shifted over to like the corporate thing, yeah. Like, so my question for you was that hard not being like center of attention at the hottest nightclub, you know, not making as much money as you're making now. You know what I mean? Was it hard to sat like e did your ego take a hit by saying I'm gonna I'm gonna go into the background, make way more money, right? Provide for my family, but not be but not be like the center of attention. Yeah. It was I, honestly it was such a needed break. It was okay. such a needed thing that people don't understand. It's like that that grind of like five to six years of just being a, even probably more than that because being at Park City Live mm. and doing their events um and 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 doing moose every saturday um it was such a grind and a mental toll on those saturdays that i really felt trapped like i felt mm. playing my safe my, i felt like my sets got redundant i felt like you know i saw everybody who was who who was in there like and we didn't have any competition that was like the main thing now there's so many spots yeah that like people you, you're gonna have to fight for that crowd but i didn't have no but competition. So everybody every night uh, on Saturday, at least on like at least for hip hop and R and B, they were coming there. Mm -hmm. And every celebrity, basketball, yeah, in the summer, football, Steelo like, Brim, everybody. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Donovan Mitchell, Rudy yeah, Bear, uh, Ricky Rubio, um, all the jazz players in that, there, in there on even off the. Um, the visiting teams are coming through there. Mm. Rappers, hip hop artists, R and B artists. Um, like I can, I, I sometimes I'll go check through my phone. Sometimes and just like reminisce, and I'm just like, man, it was just so I was, much. I was watching the Mario there. footage the other day. Oh, remember man. that? Yes. I'm about, I'm about to insert that. The last, the, the last time I went to that club was when, when we were filming. When right? We were filming. Yeah. We went there. Yeah. So like, it's I just been there for it, it, but it was just time. a needed break. Mm -hmm. Like I just got drained and um, and. Going into the corporate world, people don't understand. Like, I could do one corporate event and do my whole club, the whole month, my whole month. Yeah, Damn. even more, even more. Yeah, shit and, on these niggas, Dan. Come yeah, on, come and, on. You know <laughs> those checks, those corporate checks hit differently, and, they, so, and they don't like, bounce. And, and like young DJs, they like they would be hitting me up. They'd be like, "Yo, love of like I haven't seen you in the on the club flyers and da 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 da." And and I'm like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Dude, I'm in the I'm in the corporate world. Like I'm in the wedding world." And so, and, and and I really appreciate that because in the wedding world, like there's no really black wedding DJs mm. in a state right now. Talk about it. And they're not even. And and first of all, you gotta be ready for it because it's it's a different. Yeah, man. I, it's a different I, battle. You, I experienced that firsthand. Like Dan. So we did a little. We did a promo video. Yeah, I'm gonna insert yeah. that here too because you know I'm gonna give my shit. I'm oh gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give myself that, my flowers every nice. episode now after last episode. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, for sure. <clears throat> So Dan has a whole like ecosystem yeah. that supports the wedding. Like, like what we do, lavalier mics yeah. for the preacher, a fucking mixer, um, the, the lights, the, the playlists, like a whole curated he's like vibe. the MC of the wedding. Right. And, but, but not, not only that, not even having anything to do with you being black, but yeah, that's, that's, that's excellent. That's black excellence always, All day. but the value you provide mm. within all, every, with all your experience, right. the value you provide a wedding, I can tell it, 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 it's just on another level. 
Yeah, it's just <laughs> like, uh, and I get to see like really, you know, black couples. You know, I get to do, like I did a black wedding last year and it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. But I learned a lot too, because your your playlist is all different. Mm -hmm. You know, the songs that they connect to are different yep. from the club. You know, what you're going to play in the reception hour where people are just talking and people want a curated kind of set for that. Yeah. And then when you go to the dancing part, they want a different set That's what's for crazy. That. And, and just seeing all the different and, couples. And didn't you say that like they know too, like. They know, like they they <laughs> like know. while they're taking pictures, he said someone was like, "Hey, yo, that's that's not on the list. What's going on?" Yeah, they know. Like I went off. Like, I mean, I had, it makes had, sense though. I it had, makes sense. No, it was just like I put it this way: like I have a wedding coming up, and 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 the, and it's a black and a black gentleman and the, the groom, and he's like, you know, he's an MBA guy. Mm -hmm. He has his he has a um, he has his uh, medical degree as well, and it's just like. I get to see those people like black and like people of color professionals, mm -hmm. you know, Latino, black, whatever. And like I get to see those professionals and they have money, mm -hmm. you know, and like they want, you know, they don't want the corny white guy DJ. <laughs> like they don't want all that. They want like someone who's going to play their music, who's going to know how to play their music. And it, and I'm in a kind of a, at least being in Utah, like I'm in a market where there's really not any competition. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I get sense. to provide that. Yeah. And I feel good because you get to see like the love between two people. You get to see the family interactions. You get to drink great wine, great drinks, crafted drinks, great food mm -hmm. um, on there. And it's just, and you just, you just see a different world outside yep. of like the club and and in the, the club world, but so it, what, and it pays differently. And so what, it's just, what made you like change lanes? What made you go from the club scene to say, I'm, I'm done mm -hmm. there. And I'm going to, and how did you it. get connected there? Cause I, it's, it's all about relationships. So I still do. I, okay. So I still do the clubs. I still yeah. do. I still do the clubs on like on a smaller level, mm -hmm. but I, um, I'm at, and that's even kind of on a side note. So I work at the sun trap. So, mm -hmm. and so in the gay money, I worked in the gay club. <laughs> And so, I mean, sorry, LGBTQ plus money. Sorry. Yes. And so, it, but people don't know this, but like the owner and the, man, and the manager is black. Mm -hmm. And and so it's, it, it's, so it's different because he was even when, even when uh, I first walked in there, he was even kind of like, like, you have a black DJ, like you're black. Like, and he's like, yeah, like I can, I can get down too. <laughs> like, don't, don't, like, and so then he heard me a couple of times. Um, um, and uh, then he's like, okay, you get it. Like, you know how to play my room and you know how to play to the LGBTQ plus community and and you and rock that room. And so I get to rock that room. I get to play for a different audience that don't even know my, my background or my history with that. And so I still that's still enjoyment. I still get to do the clubs and then I get to do the weddings. I was already doing weddings, but I never really promoted myself. But how, but how did you get into, into that, that, into that, into those rooms? Um at starting it it was just um like hearsay people would just be okay. word of mouth and then like now it's three years and then there's like a big wedding website it's called like the knot and yeah. the, and so um and it's they have a sister company called the wedding wire and so a lot of us um djs that want to do weddings and stuff like that we all go in there and we have to post ourselves on there we have to pay like a, a subscription okay. and, and get marketing through them and then Mostly couples come in, uh, they hit you up on there with the app and all that stuff. And so yeah. start booking stuff through that. And like, I think it's just cool just because I get to see a lot of different people that like, they don't go out a lot. Like these mm -hmm. aren't like club yeah. people. These aren't like, these are, these are just like working professionals. I'm, I'm, I'm <clears> home <throat> on Friday night and Saturday night with doing nothing or I'm watching Netflix. Yeah. And like, this is my one chance that I get to have that. I get to dance on the dance floor, Yeah, you know, and I get to have that moment and stuff like that. And really being in these venues, like people don't understand, like I had a wedding up at high West and like, mm. we sit in there Ooh. just drinking, I'm drinking whiskey, just yep. like Chilling. 50 glasses of, of high West whiskey. And you're just taking them <laughs> and, and you know, and you know, you already know how much those cost yeah. in a bar. Oh yeah. You, you know? So it's just like, you're just in different spaces mm -hmm. with different people. And those are the people who really can promote you. Mm -hmm. Those are the spaces where um, if you're a person of color, you know what, they may take a shot on you, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, well, what do you do? You get into those, those conversations of people that, you know, they have, they're in these corporate spaces that 
you, you're not in in the club. There's yeah. no way yeah. you're meeting these people in the club. <clears throat> oh, yeah. No, they don't even know what's going on. They, they couldn't tell you nothing of what's hot and what's new, but they see you yeah. and they're like, man, you're 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 really good. Like you play, you're a really good DJ. And then you start getting to, you know, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm I'm boring. I'm a VP of a multi-million dollar company. I'm like, <laughs> man, that's I want your money. How do you how did you get there? Yeah. You, you know, so it's just you're just in different, you just have different audiences, and you really just gotta I appreciate all the couples that booked me and and but and they don't know me for nothing. Yeah. That's the funny part. You know, it's, you know, it's interesting about that. Like, so you're you're really successful now. We even got into their like refereeing and shit like that. Like, yes. and you have a successful day job. Like, that's why I kind of wanted to talk about today. Yeah, yeah. Just like how the how you could be successful at your day job and how that can just in return really um, push your passion projects. Yeah. Or what yeah. have you. Um, but you know, I, I don't even. I we talked about it a little bit last time. Mm. But people not documenting enough of the process yeah. of like how mm. it took to to get there. So me and this brother go back, right? And I think it was 2009. Dan was DJing at, at the Gateway Apartments just for his homies, right? And in house parties, yep, right. Like so that's why that's why Lovers SLC to me is a vibe because it's so nostalgic. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like R. Kelly's music. You know, no, I'm playing, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm just Funny saying. thing you said that because I get, I get like, like oh, people talk about don't it. Here we go. Know, Here we go. Like people will put on. So I have my couples that put on like the playlist or whatever, and 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 like songs they want to hear. If I if I get uh, remix to ignition, um, ignition remix on there like all the time, and then I'll get, and then the new one is um, the weekend the. The uh, I don't the what she was the I don't want to know they the, they sampled the I don't want to know oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, yeah. no that's uh that's um that's on the uh what who's what a DJ or uh, Metro Boomin yes, yeah 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 that, yeah. Tr- yeah. that project yeah. The, 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 so I got I got that on playlist. I'm like, you know, this is about like cheating. Like, what's going on? And you, you guys about to get married? And uh, I don't want to know. Well, you thought you're, yeah. you're throwing like you throwing. If you're playing me, keep it on low. <laughs> you know? you know I mean? And so I'm sitting there like, like, you really want me to play this? Like in the in the background Dan, of the reception. Dan, Dan's taking bets in the back with his team. Like, how long this one gonna yeah. last? Oh, really? I've, I've already had a, a wedding. I did divorce already. Dang, bro. I've already Don't do one. it. No, I'm playing. No, do it. Do it. Damn, do it. But, but, you know, some of them. And then you get to see all the backstories. You get to see, like, the family feuds. Like, all that. Like, there was one Damn. that was just awkward. It was just like, so I'm like, next up is the the parents' bride and, and, the, and the parents' maid of honor. And, uh, um, the well, the bride of the parents. Sorry. And uh, the, the, the mom was like, no, we're going up. Se- I'm going up separate. And I'm like, this is awkward. Like, okay. Like, and and so you just see all that family. All that stuff, drama. All the drama. Yeah, bro. The bridezillas. You um, know motherfuckers don't like each other. You right. I mean? But it's fun though. But yeah. but back to your point, like you really people really need to just embrace the process. The process, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Need, and that's why that's why this week I posted like a lot of some of our older shit. Yeah, yeah. Because I I took a lot of that down. But it's still yeah, relevant. It it's is like relevant. We on that we on that super cool shit whenever we get together, right? But so so back to what I was saying. So like Dan was living in the Gateway Apartments. Is that okay if I said it? Yeah. Yeah. Dan was living in the Gateway Apartments. Um, he was DJing, DJing house parties. That's why the, when you and Dijon said we, we're going to do this and like like monetize and create an LLC and and have mm-hmm. this 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 safe space for people with a musical IQ to come and just hang out and party, no drama, right? <clears throat> Most of the time, right? Yeah. I mean, I just, oh yeah. yeah. Um, that's why it was so beautiful to see because y'all had been doing that for free for, for so, so long. Years. Like yeah. I remember the time you set this fool set up the DJ equipment on the balcony. We're bumping it, Rose Park, bumping. The cop was like, "What the fuck are you guys like? What are you doing? Like it's eleven <laughs> o'clock. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Like even the Mexicans play their music until like eight and shut it down. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like he's like, "What are you like? What are you doing? You know what I mean? Right. So that's why it was so beautiful to see. But but then speed it up. I knew Dan had been DJ, and I try to be like a little club promoter. I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna be a club promoter." Right. Yeah, I could see that. We we had like a relationship. You had the lick though. Yeah, you we, were the centerpiece. Yeah, you were we, the best spot. Yeah, I had the, you know I'm talking all I'm making all these relationships at work, and then we 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 had been going to the Circle Lounge. Yeah, that's where it's a at. lot. <laughs> and so I said I called Dan up and I said, Yo, Dan, the store part, store Christmas party day after Christmas is a Saturday this year. Let's go to the Circle Lounge. Let's talk to so and so. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We go up in there. Hey, we want to throw a party. 
They looked at this crazy, remember? Crazy. They, like, they, didn't, they, didn't, they, were, they were just like, all right, whatever, guys. Because that was like good grammar. It was like people went there, ate sushi, hung out. Yeah. Yes. You know I what I mean? But I'm like, no, we want to, th- we, we, we love your space. We want to throw a party. He was like, all right, what, what day? December 26th. It's a the, Friday. The day after Christmas? Yes. The day after Christmas. I call up. So me and Dan did the meeting. I'm like, Dan, you ready? Dan's like, yeah, this is like 09. Yeah. It's Dan, like 09. I remember Dan, your exact words was like, yo, I told myself I'm going to start DJing in 2009. Right? Yeah. So we get a flyer together. We get a team together. We have meetings. You know, we're going to throw this party. Right? What was it called? Naughty Christmas. <laughs> something. It was something <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah, oh, I got man. Us, uh, it was like called You couldn't, even, you yeah. couldn't yeah. even do it right now. Like, yeah, you couldn't, even put, you couldn't yeah. even put the flyer oh, no, no. on right now. No, it was like Naughty Christmas. We get a graphic designer to do a flyer. That's when, this is like, hey, we're, yeah. we're a street team. Too. Yeah, I, I remember like, those types of flyers, Facebook bro. just got, got going. Yeah. MySpace had already been going. Yeah. So we're on Facebook. We're on MySpace. We're at Kinko's. We're passing out flyers. Me and Dan are going to clubs the, the week before. We're going to like new club. We're sandbars and so we're going to, we're passing out flyers. We're like, like boots to the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Hustling. The day after Christmas, the fucking like one of these like record breaking snowstorms hit, remember? Right. And I'm like, fuck, ain't nobody going to come to this shit. Yeah. We're going to make no money. And they're like, what do you want? Do you want the bar? Or do you want to like charge people the door? And we're like, we'll take the bar. And we're like, fuck, ain't nobody going to be dreaming. Ain't no, who, what, they gonna be, they're going to have like an order for 20 vodka Red Bulls for the whole <laughs> right. night. <laughs> right. Shit was packed, right? Packed. 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 Yeah. They, they didn't even know. Like you couldn't even drive in this weather. And there was a fucking line. The, they were so understaffed. And oh, they yeah. were just like, they were running with their heads cut off. Yeah. Like, they were like, oh, shit, we got to call people to come down. Oh, yeah. We got we don't have a bar back. Like, they didn't know what to do. They were not prepared. They weren't ready. Love that. They weren't ready for that. that. I mean, it, that whole space, I remember just seeing the pictures. It was just like a sea of people. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. And that place wasn't a huge place. It wasn't. No. It wasn't big. And, and y'all then, had it packed. And then we did a coat check, too. And then we, you know, me, I was like, yo, $2 per coat. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we taking all this money. <laughs> me and Shay, me and Shay had a uh, pocket full of money. <laughs> I, I was DJ, I turned around, I'm like, what are these coats on the floor? Bro, coats was like to this TV right here. Like we were just throwing them, just $2. Throwing them. Mound of coats. <laughs> to where the next time we went back, we're like, all right, we want to do another party. They was like, absolutely nope. not. <laughs> yeah. Like. Oh, they were trying to, they were they were just like trying to manigle and trying yeah. to nickel and dime and like, yeah, you can. But it's just like, the, the, they just didn't, they, they were just trying to like, oh, they were just trying to profit off, off of us, basically. Yeah. They were just giving us stuff. That's like, how much you could do. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like, no, what was it called? Like next next level entertainment or oh, new, yeah, vision? Yeah, new, like vision. new vision? New vision. New vision entertainment, man. Holla. Shit. It was good. My guys. But, but this, this segues me into a perfect, perfect topic because- at that time, <clears throat> obviously I'm working, doing yep. good at my job. I get promoted too. So I'm like, oh shit, I'm promoted. Like, got the job I want. Yeah. Um, you know, not too long after that, Zoe comes. Mm. I shut everything down. You know what I mean? So that's why I gotta apply. Which one is it? This one. This one? No. This one. This one. That's why I gotta applaud Londo because um <clears throat> most people, when they have a child, they shut everything down, mm-hmm. figure it out. Figure out finances, figure out babysitting, just life, sleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mental clarity moments, like we were (laughs) just talking about before Dan came in here. Um, You're going through an adoption process. Yeah. Which is looking pretty promising. Yes, sir. And you haven't shut everything down. Mm. I feel like it's made you hustle harder. And I ain't going to lie. I'm like, yo, me and Miguel are talking. I'm like, yo. Lon will get his baby. You think he's going to stick around? Miguel's like, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel, got, like, Miguel got a splinter at work and yeah, he's sticking yeah, around. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to buy another camera just in case. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Um, I got to applaud you, man, just for sticking around with us. Appreciate you know what I mean? And, and going through that and uh, Appreciate that. You know, still focusing on your, your, your passion projects. Because I, in my situation, I shut everything down. So um, talk you about shouldn't. that. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. But yeah, talk yeah. about that because... I feel like the listeners need to to know, like you could still yeah. like pursue your passions. And yeah. diff- you might have to pivot a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think for me, I never wanted kids. Mm. Growing up, growing up into a young adult, never wanted kids. It was not in the cards for me. Um, but as I matured as an adult, as me and my wife talked about it more, I became 
more open to the idea of it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just through conversation. That was the only thing we ever thought about. So we ended up having to go to therapy for it to figure out how to communicate Mm. about having children. And after about a year and a half of weekly (laughs) therapy visits, uh, we got to a point where I was like, yeah, I could do this. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand and I would love to have that opportunity. Fast forward, we get this opportunity. And the biggest point that I tried to hold in those conversations was If we bring a child into this family, I do not want that to stop us from the goals that we have and we want to accomplish as a couple, as an individuals, we will integrate the baby into our family Mm. and keep moving. So because I set that precedent up front, it was easy for me to keep running with that Mm -hmm. versus having it happen. Like, Oh, we got to change everything. Yeah. So like when it comes to traveling, we want to go to Spain. Mm -hmm. We wanted to go to Spain. We were supposed to go last year. Right. That got put on hold. We need to go this year. It's on hold until the process, the adoption is completed. But once it's done, we're going and we're going for a month and he's coming with. Yeah. Damn. Wow. He's got the helmet by then. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Hater, bro. But he's coming with, right? Like, I want to wait a whole month. Yeah. When y'all going? When when y'all doing this? Uh, we haven't decided. Probably closer towards the end of the year. Okay. Okay. We gotta make got a plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Might have to yeah. do some guest hosts like the breakfast. Yeah. Club. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. My my style's step in for me. Um. But no. I want to bring him along. Yeah. On this journey. So does it make things more complicated? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Do you have to make other considerations? Absolutely. But who would I be if what I preach on this show is representation and not give him representation? Mm. Not show him that there's a different way, not show him that you can hustle in a myriad of different avenues to get what you want in life. Mm -hmm. So it would have left a bad taste in my mouth Again, from what I set the precedent of, of I don't want to stop just because if I stopped Mm. and wasn't able to show him because then he sees, oh, my dad stopped. Yeah. Why did you stop chasing your dreams? Exactly. And I didn't want that. And and that's the thing because, um, and and I'll uh, pass it back to you, Dan, because I remember, you know, we we stopped promoting, but it, it gave you the exposure. Yeah. Like. He took off like he's yeah. he's every he was everywhere. I was like, oh shit! Like he's he's DJing like places we you probably never at that time never would have thought you would DJ no. at like Park City Live or Harry's whatever it was called never. back in the day. Like that was pretty much like <laughs> I I, that was like the that pinnacle, yeah. right? But I, like I start coming around with this camera, I start coming around with this camera. Everybody looking at me crazy, right? But I was like. No, I'm really gonna do this shit. Yeah, you was vlogging. Like I'm, I'm about to, I'm about to vlog. I'm gonna just record shit. Like Dan, we did top five. Top five live. live. I remember on, that? Man. Yeah. I told him. Yeah. I told him. He asked me. I said, "Yo," he's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start a podcast." I'm like, "Do it, do it." Yeah, yeah. He told I me. I told like, him 100. I was like, "Do it." Yeah. I'm like, "Just do it." I'm like, "Man, I DJed. I just jumped into it. So you're gonna crash and burn. You make mistakes. Yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna mess up, but you're gonna learn and you're gonna enjoy mm. the journey. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's about enjoying the journey. I mean, I got lucky. Like. I, I ain't. Got, I, I tell. I tell folks like, man, I got lucky. I got networked with the right people. No, nah, but you were putting in. But you were ready well, though. You were putting in the work, work though. Yeah, you were putting so in the work. So you only get. It's kind of like. But hold on, before you go into that, how? What? What? Uh, even attracted you to buy like turntables? Man, I was just. I, well, kind of like I was always a music dude. Like I've kind of said, and yeah. but, but you have to. It, there's a difference of people who actually take the step. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and jump. That's the difference. That that is the difference of of you took the step mm-hmm. of creating a podcast and jumping into it and putting yourself out there for the world, mm-hmm. and, you know, and and you have to do that. And if you're not ready for it, then you're going to mess up. But you that fear of so many people hold themselves back because of the fear. Yeah, and 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 you can't. You you're going to mess up. It's life, but you're mm-hmm. going to learn from it. You're going to grow from it, and then you're going to get better at it. And that's just with anything. And so once you do that. Then and you and you take that fear away. I just jumped in 
And I knew I was going to, I had bad nights. I got nights when I was like, you're the worst ever and blah, blah, or man, you suck. And like, <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, maybe I could have done this part a little bit better, a little bit differently, but I, I still just kept on with this journey. You know, I was like, you know, and, and early in my career, like I was doing shows I was not ready for. It. Like, well, we were so that. young. We were like, what? <laughs> 27 we were young i mean like we were young we were, we were doing stuff like and I, I would have alonzo with me and we were just being these these venues and like this is 50.com oh, yeah, come that on party. Damn. I, I wasn't even ready for that party and like i was oh that's just talk about just not just like randomly <laughs> jumping on to something so my so i get hit oh, up oh my god i get hit up like weekend or like yo don't say nothing. I got 50 cent and I got this whole like weekend of you like up there. And I'm like, all right, bet. And so then they post it. It goes viral. viral. Instagram, Instagram. I'm like, yo, Zo. It's in the gotta- middle of nowhere, Park City. Yeah. In a warehouse. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I get hit up real quick. My boy Bentley's DJing like he's DJing like the Friday night and Saturday night of it. And I'm like, OK, cool. So I'm just and, and I did the Thursday night because I wasn't ready. I was just starting out. So I DJ the, the Thursday night. I go with Bentley um, on the, the the Friday night. And so Bentley's DJing, yada, yada. And like Dan picks up the mic. I just grab the mic. And so I just start like emceeing. I just start- no, but killing it though. <laughs> to where it was like, to, to where it was like, oh, Dan's up. Like Dan's like working the room. Like he's Love killing it. it. He's killing it. To where it's like, I was a brokey back then. Like, I remember we tried to go get, let me get a cranberry vodka. Okay, yeah. I give him my card. They're like, you know, it's $100 minimum. Oh, give me that back. <laughs> give me that shit back. Give me that back. I was sipping people's drinks that night. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna hold you. Um, I so, drank so many Stellas that yeah. night. I was just... No, so, 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 Moise Bentley, friend of the show. Yeah. He gets on the mic. Yeah. Elijah gets on the mic. Yeah, that makes sense. And they kicked them too. They got they got them niggas out of here so fast. It's like get your ass off the mic and get off the mic. Dan is rocking the show. Dan is rocking it. Look, let's go left side, left side. Where you at? Like Dan is killing it. Like Dan is killing it. And I remember when they got on the mic, I I, I was looking at somebody. I was like, get these two niggas off the stage, please. <laughs> they're my boys. They're, they're, they're my guys dude. too. They're, they're my guys, guys too. Yeah, they're they're still, my they're guys. still my guys. Still my guys. But they was copying uh, that night. But uh, like. But but literally, I was about to get off. Like I get off. I was like, I took. I had the wireless mic, and they're like, and I'm in the back. And then I started just creeping up to the to the stage, and and I was like, Yo, Bentley, let's go. And Bentley's just sitting there, just killing it and doing this thing and, and warming up. But like, I was about to be done. And then like, everyone's like, No, nope. stay on stage. Stay. Everybody's like, Stay on stage. You're killing. Stay. I'm like. There's a thousand people out here, and, and I see Alonzo on the side. And he's just chilling, hanging out, and I'm just like. What am I supposed to do? I've never done this before. Like, hey, it's just... You get in just, where you fit in. It's just back to that, take that jump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just take that jump. You never know where you're going to lead. Like, I bet the Far East movement there that night, and then oh, just like... Oh, I forgot about them. Yeah. When they were like the hottest group yeah. in like top 40... Bruno Mars had, yeah. was on one of their songs at the time. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. wasn't so, even like Bruno Mars. Yeah, it was yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then like 50 cents in a booth, like right, like yep. literally 10 feet from me. And I'm crazy. just like... I, what am I doing? Like, and, and and I was just so like, I just got taken in. Like, and you need to just cherish those moments. Yep. That's and right. um, and whatever you do, and whatever, and and I, whatever you, t- whatever your your goals is, whatever your process is, whether it's like you want to, you know, start your own podcast, you want to make more money, you want to, you know, get a different job, you have to make the jump. Right. And you have to prepare yourself and be ready for that when that opportunity comes, Mm -hmm. you know, because I I tell people all the time, they're like, hey, I I want this job. How do I, how I prepare for it? And I'm like, okay, well, do you know anything about the job? What about the industry? What the job entails? They're like, no, I'm like, go do your research, you know, so you're prepared. Exactly. Act like, act, act like you work there. Yeah. You know, and yeah. just like, you, you know, you guys at the podcast, like you, you guys jumped on, you know, and you started, you guys upgraded your equipment, yep. you know, you several got, times. Look, look, yeah. <laughs> you look at the, you, you know, those bad audio days where you mess oh, up yeah. the, the audio files. And well, the, like, first, the first time you came on, we didn't have mics. We were just talking mm, to the cameras. Yeah, we were right. just talking to the camera mics. I think I was the first guest. Yeah, yeah. You remember my basement? Yep. Yeah. Was that was that the first? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, hey, pretty much. That was yeah, like the first we, guest. Yeah. In, in Alonzo's basement, we yep. hung up a sheet in the background yeah. to and a ring act, light. Yeah, and a ring light, and then uh, sitting on stools trying to drinking some Johnny Walker Black, <laughs> <laughs> talking about nothing. <laughs> and 
and and and and that's awesome. And, and that's the cool thing about it is, is that you know me being the first guest and then seeing all everybody that came after mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. and how everybody was just like, I, I even get hit up. Like people were like, "Yo," and Lonzo knows them. Like, "Yo, they he he they're trying to get on." Like they're trying to be on your podcast. So, yo, this other person trying to be on the podcast. Like, yeah, and and it's just great to see your guys' own evolution. Yeah, personally, thank you, professionally, appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah, sure. Um, and 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 now you you guys, pro- like I told Alonzo, like off camera a couple like weeks ago, I'm like, yo, you have the the number one podcast for people of color in the state of Utah. Oh yeah, hands down, hands down, hands down. Like every for all the people who've been on your podcast. There's who who haven't you had on? I, and I always tell I tell Zoe I push him. I'm like, yo, go somebody bigger. Like, oh, go yeah. after somebody bigger. Yep. Like, you know, you, you you can do it. Your podcast can show it. You do great work. Mm-hmm. So go and tackle it. Just look at yeah. the events you guys go to, and like the, the eyeballs that are on you now. It's just we, now for you to take it. We were just talking about that last last episode. Like, yeah. As far as like shooting up and leveling up, and like the rooms we've been in lately, and mm-hmm. the content we've been able to produce for you know other people. I mean, and you you said it. You said it best. Um, couple couple a uh, couple subjects ago but um the people that you get to interact with like i never like nikki walker my auntie like yeah. i yep. we just we're friends so for when she called us when she called us like hey y'all ready like i need y'all for this and this and this yeah and then all then all star came and it was like i need you for this and this and this mm-hmm. like could they have gotten a better production company probably, probably. but are they going to get somebody that's going to match the room work the room like no nope. absolutely not it's, it's all about the value that you really can can provide it's relationships you know what i mean it is it, it is it's yeah. relationships. relationships everything is relationships yeah and not being a, and, and not being a dickhead yeah right yeah like perfect example i'm about to get petty right now i'm wearing the petty boy shirt. do it bro so you talked up. about this you talked about this and i clipped it up you said hey there's some people that come on the episode and don't know that they, the 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 fucking hit the rev what's the word i'm looking for for this for our intro the intro is just it's just fucking Immaculate. It's it's great. <laughs> it's great. It's on some like it's on somebody said somebody compared it to um Bodega Boys. What are those dudes called? Uh ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The dudes from Showtime. Yeah, yeah. They're like, oh y'all, you guys remind me of the Bodega Boys. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh man, they just like we started adding on and adding on, adding mm-hmm. on. But if you don't, if you don't do your homework on us and know what this conversation entails and know it's just pretty much open format, Dan hit me up today. What are we talking about? Maybe this and this and this. Like it's organic. Yeah. Like conversation go where it needs you want to go. if you want to get interviewed, go to PBS. Yes. Like go go somewhere like that. Go but on like, the Fox 13 local. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, you know, don't do your homework on us. Yes. Yes. And don't expect to us to, to do your homework it. on you. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like facts. That's what it is. And if you scared, if if you scared of the smoke and you said to me, don't ask me this, don't ask me that. This ain't it. This ain't the fucking this yeah. ain't the this ain't the platform right. for you. This ain't it. Take your ass, take your scary ass somewhere else. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, I get that too. I get I get that with what like some of my corporate events, they always up like in my weddings. And but sometimes in my weddings are like, yo, will you come down on your price? I'm like, no. No. I'm like, no. Like, like I work too hard. I give you such a great product. You see the content yeah. uh, of, of, of what I do. You pay for the value. You pay for the value. And then they're like, and then I, I'll do their wedding. They'll be like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm, I'm so, so glad. Right. I am I'm, so glad. Oh my God. <laughs> exactly. I'm so glad I met, I, I'm so glad I booked you. I'm like, exactly. I'm like, there's, there's a reason what they, for that. What they say about, so the, the video we did. Oh yeah. People uh, were talk like. Talk about the video. Just talk about the video. <laughs> That is one of the best stories, right? I mean, of of like karma, of of, of you you told on yourself. Um, so so we did a video. Uh, we did a video together. Uh, I, I said, "Yo, I need Alonzo." I was like, "Yo, I have this um, dope wedding. Yep. I need I need a videographer." So so I'm like, "All right." So and and it's it's gonna be amazing. middle of nowhere, middle middle of nowhere, but it's a b- beautiful venue. It's oh one yeah. Of the, Top venues I, I I've probably been into. Oh yeah, man, they had restoration, hardware, couches All in day. there. Oh, like yeah, it was like day. that. And uh, okay. and and so uh, so Lonzo's doing. He's shooting the video, and, and his videos for the wedding or for for you. you. For the one I showed you. Yeah, I, I remember. Video. I just want the audience. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a so, promo you know, video for for me you for and my your DJ yeah, and, okay, and the value life. he provides when he shows yes. us. Yes, right. Okay, um, on there. So um, I'm gonna pass the baton to you. So I kill the wedding. Um, Alonzo's getting great footage and and everything else. Oh, and the then we're nice. packing up, and then this happens. So I'm packing up, 
videographer that was there all day, drone, three cameras, fucking. And this was the videographer for the wedding. For the wedding. He's he's yeah, plugging okay. into Dan's equipment and stuff. Like I'm plugging in, I'm plugging in too, but it's just, you know, he's just everywhere. Drone, yeah. everywhere. Oh gosh, you were everywhere tonight. Hope you didn't make a better video than me. <laughs> it was like in my mind, I'm like, bro, you had like three cameras, lighting, light on the camera. Right. Like, I'm just like doing me, having fun. You know what I mean? Wait for it. Saying, we do the video, we put it out. Me and Dan, you know, me and Dan tweak some things. Boom, put it out. He gets more business. The bride hits me up. Like, yo, can you look over the, can you look over his footage? I'm not happy. Ooh. And then I was, I'm, I was just like, you should have went through Young OG via <laughs> LLC. Talk that talk. And we could have got you right. You know what I mean? And like every time I go to sit down to look at it, some like Zoe were like, Dad, or something happens. So I know what that footage is not meant for me to touch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it ain't, wedding. It's not your footage. Yeah, it is kind of hard to fuck up a wedding. They like, they pretty much like everything you go give them. Like, like what do you do? There's an emotional attachment. Yeah, to it, for it, sure. It, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it, it must have been, yeah, it must have been pretty bad. Well, yes. I agree with you, but to your point, previous conversation, there's a different experience and a different value that comes with what we produce, mm -hmm. with what Dan produces in his events. So I understand why they would ask that of you after seeing the video you curated for Dan's promo, mm -hmm. because when I saw it, I was like, yo, I kind of had FOMO. I was like, I fucking missed that wedding. <laughs> like, I don't even need to know the people. Let me get up in that right. bitch. And, and, you, and you know how I feel. Like, yeah. I'm up close You're and in personal. Yeah, I'm yeah. in the crowd. Yeah, we get in like, people's faces with yeah, cameras. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I was like, I feel like we, we get in fucking I saw, I saw somebody's, some, somebody's uh, video recently of All-Star Weekend and the shit that they were filming, blah, blah, blah. But you could tell it was the event that they were filming, right? Mm -hmm. Who do I see in the background? Alonzo on stage in someone's face with a fucking camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's the footage that we're getting mm -hmm. from someone else's camera. It doesn't look great because you're right there. But when you see it from our camera. Yeah, we in like, there. We in there. We in there. But Dan, but Dan, like, shut down. I feel like I really got, I really captured the moment. Oh, like, what? for sure. Yes. Because uh, didn't you say someone was like, I didn't know you rock it. Like, you shut it down like that. Yeah. I get so many, like, just um like compliments and just like oh your wedding's like that i'm like yeah like a lot of times i you know i'll just take a picture from the phone but like when you can actually get the the videography and get that actual yeah, yeah, content yeah. like you know pay for 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 content yeah you know because i pay for alonzo to do work mm -hmm. you know i paid for you hear that you know, guys like i like i didn't i didn't say yo like let me just get let, let can me you come, can you come stuff. help me out? Yeah, yo, yeah. yo, let me just do it for free. Like, you know, I was like, you got to support your friends. Yep. yep. And you got to, no matter if they give you the homie discount or whatever, you still got to pay them yeah. for their time. Exactly. And, and, and as much as you can. So I'd say, hey, Lonzo throws a number at me. I'm like, what's your number? He's like, he'll throw a number back. I'm like, all right, fine. Whatever. Easy. I don't care. Like it's not he's, even. He's it's making. Not even an he's argument. making three grand from the wedding. What's you know? <laughs> what's the homie discount? <laughs> you know. So, but, you, but see, but I know, like, I know Alonzo's work, and and I know the editing of like what all you guys do, and so hey, but, it's just but, like. But hold on. Go ahead. But I would say, but I know his work, so I know. But when someone else sees the work, it's going to pop. And what happened? I popped that up. It's like 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 like. Mm -hmm. I sent it on the on the wedding website. Like like I, that first week, I probably got like seventy inquiries. Oh like, shit! I need ten percent of, of all the weddings in June. <laughs> like, no, you, need to, you need to renegotiate <laughs> like, that like, contract. Oh my god, we love the video. Like and 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 so and and I put it in my message. I put that link to oh, my YouTube dope. in the message on there. And so you you really gotta people really do need to pay. Like do your vet your people, but also do good business mm -hmm. and and then mm -hmm. and then show show your crap of what you can do. Yeah. You know, right. now you got content of what you can do for weddings. I got content of how my weddings are when yep. I DJ them and 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 so forth. Yeah. And everybody wins. Everybody wins. But what I was gonna say was like part of that, part of me going with Dan. Like, yeah, we're it's business, right? Business is involved. I just wanted to hang out with my guy though. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like me and you every week. I just want to hang out. Yeah. Like we're well, we're doing business. I just want to hang out. How, there was a I, we had time taken away from our friendship for what, like a year? Yeah, about a year. About a year. 
And I'm a, we got to get into it. We got some time left about you know it's mental health, yeah. right? Yeah. You really want to get into that? No, no, we don't. No, okay. no nigga, we don't, okay. come on, man. I'm just All going. Right. No, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just using it as an example. I just wanted to hang out with my guy. Yeah, yeah. and it was a good yeah. time to reconnect and hang out, and have fun, and do business at the same time. Right. But there was a time where for about a year, to Dan's point, we didn't we didn't really talk. Yeah. And like, we're everything's going good in life, but there was there was something missing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. like. I I remember talking to like several people like hey this is what happened is it is it has time has too much time gone by and 95% of the people was like yeah you probably won't rekindle that relationship mm. two little girls I work with at Express like the f- man text him <laughs> be the bigger person text him not that I was the bigger person but like you know text <laughs> know him reached out Dan said hey thank you for reaching out this is how I was feeling you was wrong. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. Let's have lunch. And then we we were able to mend yeah. our relationship. But my mental that. health was was decent. But when I said, what's off here, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm not right with my guy. Got you. It fucked yeah. with me. Yeah. Was I losing sleep? No. But like it, it just mess, it yeah, messed yeah. with me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like it's mental health month. So all, I'm just bringing all that up to see, to show people like what a full circle moment looks like. And what yeah. a, we preach this all the time on the show. Mm-hmm. A conversation can fix Solve everything. Yes. Yeah. You got to check in with people. Yes. Man. You got to check in. I mean, I even have to tell myself that sometimes it's just like, I haven't talked to, I haven't talked to so-and-so mm-hmm. in, in, in a minute. I got to, I got to just send a text. It's like, Hey, how yeah. you doing? Mm-hmm. Just like checking in and just saying, saying hi, even yeah. if it's a, even if it's five texts. Yeah. You I think, know, I think and, what's even more important than that though, is checking in with yourself. Mm-hmm. Cause like, it's great to check in on your homies, right? Mm-hmm. Great to check in on your people. But if you aren't mentally right, right, doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Like in in the spirit of, of the the mental health awareness, we were talking about it before. Yeah, Monday this week, mm-hmm. I had to take a personal day from work, which never doesn't happened. happen. Yeah, it just doesn't. But Sunday night, I realized I was not okay. I was not in a good place mentally, physically, emotionally. I was like, I can't fucking do this. I need a moment. Mm -hmm. So I woke up, messaged my team, messaged my boss, and I was like, I need a day. That's it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And because this doesn't happen all day. Oh my God, Londo, are you okay? are, Are you okay? What's going on? Everything okay? Like, and people messaging People from my team. What's going on with Lando? Is he okay? Is everything good? Like, what's going on? Should we send him to crumble? Yeah, it's because this shit <laughs> doesn't happen, right? So, like, even for this, mm-hmm. people see what we do here, right? Yeah. We talk about things, but I'm not fucking Superman. Mm-hmm. I need breaks. Yep. I need mental breaks. I struggle with things sometimes. And at that point, I had to check in with myself. Yep. Yep. And... I'm good now, but Monday was fucking rough. Bro. You said you had to take you have to take inventory. Yeah, yeah. you have to take did. inventory. And I think as Latinos, Blacks, Polynesians, Hispanics, La, uh, Spanish people, yeah, we're we're just raised so different. Oh yeah, to bro, just it's crazy. to just always be on. Yeah, right. and I had that same thought like this past weekend. I'm I'm at my place of, of significance, working, motivating, inspiring. Mm-hmm. My boss calls in. I just can't do it today. Yeah. All right, yo. Hey, we got it. We got it. You know what I mean? So but less. then I go home like, fuck, why am I always on? Yeah. And Melissa was like, that's the problem. We're always on. We always. need to check in with ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even like, like yeah, me and Dan had talked for years, but there's been times where me and you weren't good. Yeah. We would record. All right, big homie, peace. See ya. Out. Yep. You know what I mean? Out. Like, you know, there we had we had turbulence yep. as well. You know what I mean? For for Ways you were feeling, ways I was feeling. Yeah. That those, these things weren't addressed. Yes. You know what I mean? And then when we figured out, I think, like I said, when we went to Vegas. Yeah. It was like, oh, okay. This is why Lando was like this. This is why Lonzo was like this. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. Good. We're, yeah, we're good, good to yeah. go. But yeah, like we we always talk, we always talk about like conversations can really solve like a ton of shit. If you're open and willing to have yes. the conversation. Yes. Yeah. Because there are people who will have the conversation, mm-hmm. but they're using it as a point to check somebody. Yeah. yeah. And that's not what it's and about. they sleep on it and they're yeah. like, fuck Alonzo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And that's not what it's about. But yeah, I think to your point, like it's 
I, t- I tell this to my team all the time because they always ask like, why, mm-hmm. why are you the way you are? I'm like, look, I know cumulatively every single one of you are going to come in and some of you will be at hundred percent. Some of you won't be. So if half of you are hundred percent, the other half are 80%, I got to make up for that make up difference. For that. So yeah. I got to come in at a hundred plus to cover that difference. And that shit's fucking draining. So it's not only about always being on, it's having to make up for the differences of the people that aren't 100%. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Even, even like, even with my work, like we have, we have a day that like you can just take a day. Like, it's a, a, per, like a sabbatical. A, day. Yeah. It's yeah. a person like you, like you just, you, you just text your whoever and say, you're like, I'm, I'm taking a personal mental health day and like no questions asked. Yeah. Like you just not even not, and you need to. And like me, I, I do walks every, I do walks in the summer. Mm. Like just oh, yeah. to, like just, just to, to get, get out. out. Yeah. Just to, just to, I, I'll do a circle around my work and just and just kind of decompress and like all right i need to just walk away Mm -hmm. and like and i won't say nothing and put the ear pods in and just just kind of have that exercise and that that release Mm -hmm. but you need to i think i think the thing is with like especially men is we and especially men of color is we worry we want to hold on to everything so much and Mm -hmm. that's why that that's where the anger comes out. That's where the aggression comes out. We have nowhere to release that. Yeah. We don't we don't talk about it with amongst our friends. Mm-mm. We don't as much. I mean, now it's gotten a lot better. Yeah, it's gotten tons a lot better. But for the longest time, it's like, wh- why are you so angry all the time? Like yeah. I always be like, 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 why are you so like revved up? And and we just don't know how to go and talk just talk about things like yeah and and we and you need to you need to go talk about you know hey my girls or my partner's just messed up and like i'm pissed off at her and i don't know how to talk about i don't know how to communicate with her um i don't know how to communicate with my boy my boss sucks how do i how do i (laughs) how do i work with this right you you know we we and then we just explode Mm -hmm. and we and and a lot of times you know sometimes you just need to just have somebody to listen to mm-hmm. and listen to somebody and and have somebody listen to you and 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 you know what you know how much that does just just listening yeah. to somebody and just like I just need I just need somebody to listen to and listen yeah. to me for a minute and to take that phone conversation. We're so quick to go to not pick up the phone yeah. and 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 just text, sorry, yeah. just text, but sometimes you just need to just call. be on the call. Yeah. yeah. And I you, think what's I think what's fucked up about it though is 90% of that is self-inflicted. Ninety mm. percent of the stress, the frustration, the anger that we feel is self-inflicted, and it's not because something didn't create that, mm-hmm. but we tend to ignore the emotion. Mm-hmm. We see what happens: first response, fight or flight, fight, mm-hmm. right? Angry, yeah. and that's the emotion you yep. feel. But we don't take the time to actually experience that emotion and understand why we're feeling that way. Mm -hmm. We just kind of push it down. I don't have time for that shit right now. I'll deal with it later. But we never come back to deal with it. So all that shit ends up boiling up and then you snap. And then we suppress it with alcohol. Mm -hmm. We suppress it with. I don't know, lean yep. and like, and whatever, whatever thing. Porn nearest. Yeah. Yes. It, whatever, whatever we think is like, whatever, whatever rap, whatever like thing they, whatever, our music whatever puts in it. it is. Whatever yeah. vice it is. Yo, are you right. feeling this like toxic trend? Cause I feel like this shit is horrible. Like what? Like, like what fucking, uh, like who, who's the dude that just came here? I, I can't stand him. Uh, Brent Fires. Yes. Like, <laughs> that, I, like I saw, I saw him like, came. It's like empty R&B. Like <laughs> niggas can't even really sing for real. Like, <laughs> like I, I'm just like, why is like, why is this so cool to be toxic? Like, oh, <laughs> I, I have two girls that I fuck at the same bar. Like, like, is, is that like, that's really the wave right now? Uh, I think I, so. I probably sound so old, but like no, I think I think so, bro. Because f- from my understanding, and this is probably you know where we uh, are out of touch with this, but from my understanding, it's because men feel attacked right now. Mm. They feel as if their positions are being challenged by women, by everybody. Oh, and there's. 
an overcorrection of I need to show my manliness. Mm. I'm not going to put up with this questioning of me as a man. So this toxic mm. representation is coming out. Now the, the labeling of toxic, like whatever, yeah, whatever. Like, like for me, that's just someone mi- miss, like full. miss me with this empty R and B, man. Y'all can't even <laughs> sing for real, like, <laughs> for real. No, I just think I, honestly, I just think I, I, I take a step back. I, I don't, I don't want to be the generational thing. So I look at okay, they're in their twenties. So yeah. they haven't, like you spent, said earlier, they're trying to find themselves. They're trying yeah. to find yeah. themselves. Me and Alonzo were, me and Alonzo were already, we were talking about like, you know, you got to sit back and be like, well, this generation, the, I don't, I'm never going to be like that. I'm yeah. going to be like, you know, this is the stage that they are in their life mm-hmm. right now. And so you, you kind of just have to let them go through it. Mm-hmm. Like, let, yeah, if he's, uh, she's, she's dating two guys, he's smashing two girls, you know, what? now it's, now it's a. Uh, you know, there are everyone's in a situation ship. You know, mm. no, no, uh, no titles, nothing. We're just we're dating, but we're not together, and we're not we're we're just. But we're, all of all, all of this, it's funny that this this, this conversation is coming up. Uh, I've been I was listening to a book, and on my way here, I was actually talking about generational changes, and what we're experiencing now from the younger generation is in a lot of ways an overcorrection from their parents mm. and the way that their parents were raised. But then you take a step back and look at the parents and how their parents raised them. And it talks about the first, second, third, fourth, fifth generations of these experiences. So if you were born in the twenties and there were certain things that came up, the mm. depression, all of these things, the roaring twenties happened, like those had a significant molding back on your growing up Mm -hmm. that you had a certain set of values and views because of it but then your kids will have a difference because of the way you raised them and what they went through so all of this is just a direct result of an overcorrection of what they Mm -hmm. saw from their parents gotcha and then whatever they went through so for us the two primary events that happened that would have shifted or changed our thought processes kids and growing up would have been 9-11 okay and the financial meltdown okay those would be the big influences in our childhood that would have made us go one way or the other mm. and based on not pizza gate <laughs> not playing <laughs> based on whichever one impacted you the most you will okay act a certain way yeah I, but but i also think like w- you know with that you you we have to understand like you know the the younger generation they are doing you know it's their time it's their time yeah yeah and you got to like let them there's so many young millionaires yeah they they mm-hmm. they have so much of an abundance of just of so much stuff at them information yep. resources yep resources mm-hmm. and then you and then on top of that, like, especially people of color, like our income levels have increased. Like yeah. uh, there's, you know, how many more black millionaires, uh, tens of millionaires, Latino, mm-hmm. you know, you got you already got Asian mm-hmm. already in there. And so like you're having those kids with so much of just everything of, of vices and just trying to find themselves. Yeah. And and then you got social media on top of that. And you're and you're you're in the paradigm of like trying to be cool, trying to be fit in. What's my angle? Where am I going to be at? Is college for me? Should I just work? Like yeah. they, you got so much of a discovery zone that, you know, they're just, they're just grabbing onto anything and they're just trying to hold on to yep. find yeah. out who they are. For yep. sure. And then us is, and then for our generations, we're like, maybe we're, maybe we, we kind of figured out who we are maybe. And then social media came. And so I was, I was not that cool in my twenties. And so now I can be an influencer and no one knows my background and I'm cool now. And, and I'm just trying and or I'm overcorrecting, you know, for like what all the things that I've done in my, back in the day. So it's, I just kind of look at people. I'm like, okay, everyone's just going to show the good side, Mm -hmm. you know? And and, and, like we were just saying, (laughs) Like social media, like it's not real. It's not real. Yeah. It's not real. I'm never like who's gonna show you their bad side. Yeah. You know, and if you do show your bad side, who really cares? Yeah. 
I got, we all got our own problems. Oh. So it's like, <laughs> talk about it. You, you, we all do. Yeah. You, you know, it's like, you got, you got the rich kid that has everything that in the world. What's well, like Bel Air. Yeah. It's yeah. Bel Air. You got yep. everything yeah. in the world. You can, you can go buy, you know, parents car, you got to go to good school, but you want to sit there and be leaned up on drugs and, or you want to go be in the hood and just try to like, you know, go go be messy. You know, <laughs> go like, be go, messy. And then you got messy. then yeah. you got then you got the hood kid, or you got the middle class hood kid yep. that would sit there and like watches all the YouTube videos, and they think I just need to carry a gun everywhere, yep. and I and I just need to lay down the block. And yep. You're like, you didn't, you, no, <laughs> like, do you know, do you know what, do you know like what life looks like? I go and, and me and my my brother, we were just talking about like, go watch what the, the clip of the judge that told um uh, excess testation oh his, his his oh my god go yeah. watch that what that judge Shit. said to that to to the one defendant yeah and watch his facial distress he was like you want to fuck around in my courtroom okay i got something for you he was gonna be in this box for life 23 and a half hours a day right you're gonna have to shit in front of everybody <laughs> like I mean, he like he. Got fucked. It, I felt I felt bad for him. I'm mean, like, this dude right? killed somebody. <laughs> yeah, this dude murdered somebody. Yeah. A robbery for not, what fifty thousand yeah. dollars? Uh, you know, and you and, and watching that is just like, man, it just hurt my heart. Mm -hmm. It just hurt my heart. And yep. like, and you see like the the impact hit him in yep. his eyes. But mental health. There's repercussions for the shit you do. Yes, and um, I think. All for a look. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is it unfortunate to have another black man in the system? Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. However, you took a life, bro. Yep. Yeah. Like, and yeah. if you didn't expect a minimum bit of recourse, you got your fucking ass. Yeah, and you yeah. and you over there texting the mom mm -hmm. like crazy shit. Like, right. That yeah. Ain't, that that that's not where it's at, bro. And. We, yeah, I think this gets back to that same point, though. Check in with yourself. Check in with mm -hmm. your people. Yep. Because mm -hmm. those are the types of things that are going to help avoid or prevent or at mm -hmm. least deter certain things from happening. Exactly. Those, those actions. Like, yep. those actions. Just follow through. Like, it's okay to not do what everybody's doing. Yep. Yeah. You know, don't. It's okay to, like, hey, I, like, I love to draw. I'm gonna go be. I'm gonna go be a graphic designer. Yeah, mm -hmm. stop trying you to know, fit in and stand like, out. Like, like it's okay, man. Yeah. Like, you don't need to go and you, you don't need to. You have no one to prove but yourself. Exactly. And yeah. you're your only. You're your biggest competition out yeah. of any of that. So Facts. it's just understanding who you are. And I understand you're gonna go through the the trials and tribulations of growing up and discovery. Yeah. You, you know, but you need to understand. Like, hey, Lion said, there's there's consequences for your actions. But there's, but you also got to have guidance and reach out to the people who really actually want to be in your life, who want the best for you. Yeah. And if they don't want the best for you because you feel like um, you need to belong, then you need to stop yourself yeah. And, yeah. and refocus and reset. Yeah. And like I told you earlier, I think we're all creatives in this room. Mm. We ain't, we're never going to run out of this. Yeah. This is what we do. Facts. Like, if we have a dream and it's vivid, we're gonna we're gonna put it in action. Yes, sir. you know what I mean. Or we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure out how to put it in action. Yes, sir. As creatives, I feel like we all kind of get in those ruts where we feel like, oh, this is gonna run out. No, it's not ever gonna fucking run out. You know what I mean? Do things at your own. Do things yeah. at your own pace. You'll figure it out. And if there's somebody that is doing the same thing as you and you're passionate about it, don't put it to the sideline because you're homie. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, just do it. Just do it. Just yeah. do it. And if it if it makes people uncomfortable, that means you're doing something right. That's a fact. You know what I mean? And if it doesn't scare you. Yeah. And and and, and Instagram is not real. I, I just love saying that because like, like all social media, TikTok. It's, it's not real. Oh, like yeah. the shit that you see takes hours. The little one minute clips that we put out, you go edit for two hours. I go edit for two hours. Sometimes it takes me another two hours because I gotta listen to the episode again to figure out what gems that I want to showcase, yep. right? And then you see that. And think it's cracking. That's cool. That's great. That's awesome. But you don't see what it takes. But you don't see the background stuff. Yeah. So if you want to come on here, do your homework on us. If you expect us to do your homework on you. And if you're not fucking with us or in our network, the network, then this probably ain't a good fit for you. Facts, bro. You know what I mean? Facts. So, and, and I think 
to this. We're we're in an, an, another peak of our content. Mm-hmm. And because we've been talking about this, just keep an eye out for that process because that is something we will be highlighting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but other than that, Dan, lover, I appreciate the conversation. Yes, sir. Always. Appreciate it. Came Thank through you for the invite. And, you fucking came through and smoked that shit. Yes, sir. Um, what's next? Uh, what could we expect for? Um, obviously, you got you, you got wedding season coming up. Wedding season is packed up. My man is a ref too. He's about to be on the D one level. Hey, we're hey, saying hey, we're hey, saying hey, here hey, on the low, on the low, <laughs> on the low. You know what I'm saying? My man has made his ranks up the refing. That's a different conversation. Um, what's next for uh, lovers? What, what events y'all got coming up? Um, we got Juneteenth, so Ooh. look out for that. Um, we got a couple, um, we got some stuff for, for Juneteenth, so check check me out. Um, I, that's usually what I really love DJing mm-hmm. is definitely just Juneteenth and really embracing that yeah. that yeah. holiday. Um, and it's, it's just a special holiday just for me, so I, and especially for Salt Lake City mm-hmm. and, and, and where we come from. Yep. And then um, I got tons of just corporate stuff coming up. And um, I'm just gonna stay blessed. Like you just, you gotta stay grinding and 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 take your opportunities. I love the the audiences that I'm I get to work in right now, um, and it's just it's just too much fun. And so um, I'm just just thankful and like I appreciate y'all just like to seeing where you guys have came from. I mean, uh, of everything you guys have accomplished, and um, and I just appreciate everyone. Um, following me and then just riding for me um, and, you know, support everybody, support your friends yep. um, as much as you can, whether it's showing up for an event, whether it's giving them, giving them money, whether it's you have an op- giving them an opportunity with a, your company or your third party or whatever, that's what it's about. Yep. And just build your network, just build your network. Cause that's, that's yep. what it's about. And, and be comfortable being in different rooms yep. in different spaces. You know, if you're the only person of color in that space, Embrace it. Embrace that motherfucker. Embrace yeah. it and, and and enjoy it. If you are or if you go into spaces that you you're you may you've never been before, go. Yeah. You have know, fun. Don't just sit at home. I know it's easy to be like, no, I'm gonna sit and watch Netflix, but no, go get up, get out, get out of your comfort zone and go see and, and experience some things. Yep. Absolutely. All y'all, all y'all people that shared that Mr. Beast post, y'all should be ashamed of yourself, man. <laughs> Go share your homie shit. What's wrong with y'all? Right. <laughs> Support your homies. Y'all ain't getting pics. Damn. <laughs> that shit was every fucking story, too. I was about ready to delete everybody. Well, shit, man. Dan, we appreciate you. Where can they find you? Um, this find me. Um, most of my biggest platform is uh, IG. So at DJ Lova Lova, that is DJ L U V A L U V A. Follow me on there. That's where I post most of my content. And then I, of course, I got my website, uh, www.djlovalova.com mm. um, on there. Official. And, and just hit me up um, if you have any events or anything like that. Um, let's do it. Yeah. Young OG 10 will get you 10% off your next wedding gig. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Young OG Perspective, where we give you a new perspective. A fresh perspective. A Young OG Perspective, baby. Y'all. Yep.